Now let's talk about how you can code up a binary heap. A really nice property of binary heaps is that you can just implement them with a vector. And the way that we do this is we map nodes of the tree into indices of the vector. Now I'm actually just going to leave the zeroth entry of the vector blank. Okay, so we're not going to access the zeroth element of the vector. That just allows for a little bit um, cleaner indexing, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. You can also start from, from zero. Now, the way that we map the nodes of the tree onto positions of the vector is from top to bottom and left to right. So the root is going to be mapped to position one, and then we go to the nodes at depth one, and we start from the left, so this node will be mapped to, in, to position two, and this one mapped to position three, and then we go to depth two, and four, five, six, seven, and then finally this one is mapped to position eight. So here you can see the start of our heap class. So again, we're just going to store the elements of the heap in a vector. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use ints. So our vector has ints. Um, we also store the number of elements in our heap. Uh, and then we have the functions that the heap wants to implement. So insert a new key, uh, remove the minimum key, and return the minimum element in the heap. Now, to implement these functions, we're, we're going to want to simulate operations of um, going from a node to its child or going from a node to its parent in the binary tree. Okay, so we need to know the relationship of positions in the vector corresponding to child and parent relationships in the binary tree. And luckily, these relationships are very simple. And again, this is why we, we start the indexing from one, is it just makes these relationships very clean. Okay, so corresponding to a position i in the vector, if we want to go to the left child, the corresponding left child, that's at position two times i in the vector. Okay, so we can just see that, you know, by means of some examples here, right, the left child of the root is at position two, its left child is at position four, its left child is at position eight, okay, et cetera. Now, if we want to go to the right child from a position i, uh, then the corresponding position in the array is two times i plus one. Okay, so again, just as an example, to go from this node to its right child, this one corresponds to position two, its right child corresponds to position five. So two times two plus one. And we can see that again over here, right? Three to seven. And finally, the parent relationship. So to go from um, position, to, to look at the parent of the node in position i, that's just going to be the floor of i divided by two. Okay, so if we look at this node, its position is four, its parent is position two. Similarly, for this node, its position is five and its parent is position two. Okay, so another um, nice way to, to write this, the floor of i divided by two, you know, for a non-negative integer is just via this bit shift operator. Okay, so this just says, you know, take i written in binary and throw away the least significant digit. Okay, and that's equivalent to taking the, the floor of, of the number divided by two. Okay, so these helper functions will be very useful to uh, help us move around in the array, you know, corresponding to natural operations in the tree, you know, where we say start at the root and want to trace, trace a path down to a leaf. Okay, now let's see how to insert a key. So say that our heap looks as follows, and we want to insert a new element uh, with key two. Okay, so the, remember that we have two invariants that we want to maintain in a heap, right? We always want our heap to be a complete binary tree, and we always want it to have the heap property. Okay, so we're going to start our insertion 
by being sure that we maintain the property of being a complete binary tree. So we're going to insert two in the bottom level of the tree at the you know, leftmost position that is not currently used. Okay, so we're going to, to, uh, to insert two right here. So now we still have a complete binary tree, right? But we don't have, we have destroyed the heap property, right? Because now two is actually smaller than its parent, which is 20. Okay, so now we need to fix the heap property. And the way that we're going to fix the heap property is by an operation that we call swim. Okay, so basically this, no, this node that we just inserted, this key that we just inserted, it's going to swim up the tree towards the root until the heap property is restored. Okay. Okay, so we have a violation of the heap property, right? Two is actually smaller than its parent. So we're just going to swap uh, two and 20, the positions of two and 20, okay? So now, is the heap property restored? It's not, right? Because two is still smaller than its parent, right? Two is smaller than 10. So again, we're going to swap two with its parent. And now the heap property has been restored, right? Now two is actually larger than its parent, okay? So now we still have a complete binary tree and we have restored the heap property. So that is the end of the insert operation. Here's some code for this swim operation. So it's going to take as input an unsigned integer i. So in our example here, the input would be nine. That is the position at which our new key was inserted originally. Okay, and we're gonna have another variable for the parent of i. And we're going to do a loop. So while p is greater than zero, that just means while p is a valid index into our vector, right? Remember that we are um, starting the indices from one. So while p is a valid index and while the heap property hasn't been restored, right? So while the key in position i is less than the key in, in the position of its parent, so while that's true, we, we still need to rectify the heap property. So how are we going to make progress towards rectifying the heap property? Well, we just swap the keys at position i and, uh, and its parent position p. Okay. So we swap the keys, and then we keep walking up the tree. So we let i take on the value of its parent, and then we let update uh, p with, with the parent of i. So we keep walking up the tree. Okay, so that's the code for the swim operation. And you can see this code in action for this little example uh, at, at this link on Godbolt. Okay, so let's think about the complexity of the insert operation. Okay, so if we look again at this code, uh, you can see that the, the body of the code, you know, we just do a swap and a couple updates. So this just takes constant time and the main complexity of the code is the number of iterations of this while loop, okay? But the maximum number of iterations of the while loop, since we're just walking up the tree on a path from a leaf to the root, so the maximum times we can do that is the height of the tree. And since we always have a complete binary tree, we know that its height is just going to be order log n when we have n elements in the tree. Okay, so that's really why we want to use a complete binary tree, so that we have this property that the height is kind of as small as possible for a binary tree with n many elements. Okay, and since the height of the tree is always uh, order log n, uh, that actually gives us order log n complexity for this insert operation. Okay, now let's look at the other main operation, the remove min operation. And we take a very similar approach in the remove min operation as we did with insert. So we know where the minimum element is, it's just sitting at the root. So we're going to uh, you know, take away the, the root. And now uh, we want to preserve 
the property that we have a complete binary tree. Okay, so how can we preserve the property of having a complete binary tree? Well, we're going to replace the root with this element, right? Because if I move this element into the position of the root, now we still have a complete binary tree, okay? But now we have actually destroyed the heap property, okay? Because 20 is actually bigger than, than its children. Okay, so we no longer have this min heap property. Okay, so just like uh, with the swim operation, now we want to restore the heap property and we call this operation sync. Okay, so when the root, the key at the root is bigger than one of its children, we look at the minimum key value of its children and we swap the key at the root with the key of that smaller child. Okay, so in this case, the children have key values of two and three. So we're gonna swap 20 and two, okay? And again, um, you know, we still have a violation of the heap property, right? Because 20 is bigger than one of its children. So again, we're going to take the minimum key of one of its children. So in that case, it would be 10. And we're going to swap 20 and 10, okay? And now, 20 is less than or equal to the keys at his children. So now we have restored the, the heap property, okay? So now we again, we uh, have maintained our invariance, right? So now the tree is still a complete binary tree and it also has the heap property. So remember that I said in the sync operation, if the heap property is violated, so if a node is bigger than one of its children, then we exchange it with the child that has the smaller key, okay? So let's see why it's important that we do this. So in this case, let's say instead of exchanging 20 and two, we exchange 20 and three. So you see, if we do that, then we actually create a new violation of the heat property, right? Now the root with key three is actually bigger than its left child, okay? And we don't want to do this, right? We basically want to maintain the property in the sync operation that the only possible violations of the heap property are below this node that we're syncing. Okay, we don't want other to create other violations of the heap property in other places of the tree. Okay, so that's why it's important that we always exchange when the heap property is violated and we exchange with the child, we always exchange with the child that has the smallest key. So the complexity of the remove min operation is very similar to that of insert. We're going to do a while loop uh, while the heap property is violated. In this while loop, we're going to walk down the tree. Uh, and in the body of the while loop, you know, it's again, it's just constant time. It's doing a, a few comparisons and exchange a swap. So the main complexity of remove min is the time to, to walk down the tree. And this is, again, the number of iterations of the while loop is going to be at most the height of the tree, which is order log n. Okay, so you see that in both, uh, for both insert and remove min, the key property determining the complexity is the height of the tree. And that's why it's critical that we use a complete binary tree so we always have that its height is order log n when it has n nodes. Let me make a subtle point about the complexity of the insert operation. So in this implementation, we've been using a standard vector to store the elements of our heap. And this is very convenient because whenever we want to insert a new element into the heap, we can just do that with the pushback function of a vector. Okay, but once we get into the complexity analysis, we have to remember that pushback is not always a constant time operation. Okay, so why is that? Well, that's because behind the scenes, vector is actually implemented with fixed size arrays. Okay, and that means that once that fixed size uh, array becomes full, um, 
So, you know, if, if our array is already full of elements and now we want to push back five, but, you know, there's no space in our array, so what standard vector is actually going to do is it's going to allocate a new array of, say, twice the size, okay? And then it's going to transfer the elements over into uh, this new array, okay? And now there's space, so now it can do, you know, the pushback of five. Okay, so every so often, uh, pushing back a new element actually takes a, a long time. It's not constant time. Okay, it actually takes time proportional to the number of elements in the vector because you have to allocate a new vector and you have to transfer over all your uh, existing elements into this new memory space, new larger memory space. Okay, so what we can say about vector though is that if you want to do n pushback operations, this still only takes time order n, okay? And that's because we have to do these um, reallocations uh, not very frequently, okay? Because every time we have to do a reallocation, we actually double the size of the array that we're using to store the elements, okay? Uh, so actually to do n pushback operations, it still just takes linear time, time order n. So what we say is that pushback has amortized complexity order one. So amortized here, it just means average. The average complexity of pushback is order one, is constant time, right? Because to do in pushback operations still just takes time order in. So the average time of a pushback operation is constant. But it's just important to remember that we don't guarantee that every pushback operation takes constant time, just on average, a pushback operation takes constant time. So what this means, translating back to our heap, is that we can't always guarantee that the insert operation is going to take order log n time. Because sometimes when we try to insert a new element onto our heap, vector behind the scenes is actually going to have to, uh, you know, say it, it reached its capacity. So it's going to have to, you know, allocate a new memory block and transfer the elements over. Okay, but just as pushback has amortized complexity uh, order one, we can say that insert in our heap has order log n amortized complexity. So here you have the final summary of the complexity of our operations. So insert you know, takes order log n time on average, amortized complexity. Uh, remove min is order log n time always in the worst case, and peak is always just constant time.